welcome back to Springhouse Farms for another episode of Native Virginia Now. And today we're going to wrap up the fall flowers. We're about a month later now, and we're so we're about September, mid-September, and we just wanted to point out the features of the prairie during this time of the year, and it's kind of the last hurrah for the prairie here. And one of the nice features is are these New York asters yes. that are <laughs> we're looking particularly engaged with. Yeah, uh, right. very, very much engaged. And they're they're really nice because they come in a lot of different colors. You see a couple different colors of, of pink and sort of a violet. And then Jeff will show you some of the other colors some that they come in. Purple, pinks and purples and blues. I try to get those in the picture. And uh, they are there are a lot of different varieties of asters. We'll show you a few more of those. And shortly. they're and they're not they're not pervasive through the prairie. They're not everywhere, but they're nice little pops of color here and there, and it, it's yeah. kind of nice. This is another example of the New York aster, and here we have some goldenrod, in fact, that we'll talk about shortly, and a fading comb flower. But this is what I really wanted to show you now, and this is one of my favorite asters, not because it's so obvious, like the larger and more prevalent New York asters, but this is called the sky blue aster. And who can't love that name, Sky Blue Aster? This little thing is a uh, smooth aster. And, um, and tickling my ear is a little wing stem. You'll notice that it's a lot quieter here than in the earlier part of the video. The birds and the insects have kind of calmed down a little bit, so we don't have to scream at each other when we're <laughs> trying to make the video. Uh, this is a flower called wing stem, and it probably looks familiar to you. You see it along roadsides, and it likes edges. And in fact, this behind me, this area, is right along one of our woodland edges. So it really, really likes it here. It's, it's quite prevalent. I'll give you one guess, too, why it's called wing stem. If you look at the stem, it's got all of these little ridges, like little wings. Some plants are a little treasure that you find that is not so obvious. And one of those in my mind is great blue lobelia. This is that plant, and it has the lobelia sort of flowers, if you can notice those. Now, these are only about a foot and a half tall, so they aren't so great. Sometimes they're bigger, but it really is a, a lovely flower. So we were talking earlier about the last hurrah of the prairie, and this is the star of the last hurrah of the prairie, the goldenrod. And there are 130 species of goldenrod, and don't ask me which one this <laughs> is. There's Canada goldenrod, Virginia goldenrod, numerous other names. And you don't know it because we didn't plant it. We didn't plant <laughs> no. it. Uh, do not plant goldenrod, it comes up everywhere. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, and if you look in the background there, it's just coming on. And this field will be solid yellow. And yeah. after seeing the field full of gray head comb flower, right. is a solid yellow. And other species early in the year, it's hard to believe that each one takes its turn. It does. And at the time one species is dominant, you think nothing else can be dominant. <laughs> right. uh, but uh, they make room for each other. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they take their turns, and they, uh, it'll be really uh, very dramatic in another week. Mm -hmm. um, interesting things about goldenrod is that. There's a certain amount of rubber in it. Edison did a lot of experimentation with goldenrod and extracting the rubber from goldenrod. Huh. And in yeah. fact, the first Model T that Henry Ford gave to Thomas Edison, the tires were made with rubber made from goldenrod. Really? Now, isn't that interesting? That is very interesting. Now, will, will I sneeze from this? Is this a... Oh, oh a good question, Allie. Um, a lot of people associate goldenrod with allergies, mm -hmm. but in fact, what's going on is ragweed is going to uh, see, well, actually, it's blossoming right around the same time. It has very subtle um, blossoms that you can't even see, uh, but the pollen of ragweed is all jagged that's and very uh, okay. allergenic. And so that's the one that you actually So we blame to. goldenrod, but it's really not. It's not goldenrod's okay. fault at all. Okay. Thanks for bringing that up. Mm -hmm. So it's September 22nd, and the goldenrod is in full bloom, you can see behind us. And this is about the last color that we're going to see in the prairie for this year. So uh, thank you for joining us during uh, the 
seasons of this prairie um, and uh, experiencing some of the blooms. There are a lot mm-hmm. more blooms that are out there, but we gave you a little taste of what's possible. Yeah. And uh, that concludes our little uh, presentation. Mm-hmm. But we have a, um, we're going to have a little series of three short videos about how to uh, select a site and how to select seeds and uh, planting and management in case you want to you do You want to do your, your own prairie. Yeah, mm-hmm. so we'll look forward to that and talk to you later. Bye. Thank you. Bye. I'm not um, flodge-wise. Are we recording? Oh. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. <laughs>